everybody. Welcome to another Bible study session. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come learn from God's Word. I'm super excited about our lesson today from Romans chapter 6. Before we get to that though, I want to stop and say Happy Independence Day to everybody out there. Uh, hopefully you are getting your grill on or your swim on at the pool or the lake or the beach. Or hopefully maybe you're just chilling inside in the AC. Uh, hopefully you get to see some fireworks. Whatever you're doing, I just hope you're having a good uh, Independence Day, 4th of July weekend. Uh, this is the day that we get to celebrate our country's independence from Great Britain. And that was established back on July 4th of 1776. And so I know I just shared something with you that you probably never heard before. And I know you're like, wait, what's that date? So go ahead and write that down. You can share that with your friends and your neighbors and absolutely blow their mind and help them see you as a true historical scholar. So it'll make you seem super intelligent. So just wanted to share that little nugget with you. You can take that with you. Um, but uh, speaking of independence and uh, freedom, uh, we as human beings see that that's one of the things that we seek the most at the earliest of ages. So from the age of being a toddler, if you're a parent and you have a toddler currently or have a kid and have seen them go through that toddler stage, you know that one of the first things they want to do when you ask them to do something is say no. And that's because they're wanting to establish their independence. They want to do things their way and not your way. Um, as that, that that doesn't end at the uh, at the end of being a toddler. That that's a battle that parents and kids have to different degrees, you know, throughout the rest of the time that, of them being kids. But as kids, one of the things we want is just a little more leeway, just just a little more freedom, a little more trust, where we can go and do things ourselves. We want to establish our independence. We something we look for. So uh, as parents, some ways that we allow that to our kids may be. Uh, having a longer curfew, uh, maybe being able to stay up a little bit later, uh, spend the night out at a friend's house, um, you know, ride the bike around the neighborhood without your supervision, whatever. Those are all things as kids that we get excited about and are like, yes, you know, we get a little bit of time away from the parents and I can kind of do things, uh, you know, my way a little bit. And it's just a little bit more uh, freedom of, of getting out of your underneath your parents' umbrella for a short time. Uh, one of the biggest times, though, is when we turn 16, and you can get your driver's license. So if you are blessed enough to have passed it on your first try, which congratulations, you should pat yourself on the back. Uh, and also, uh, if you are blessed to have a parent that was nice enough to let you drive their car, or even able to give you a car to drive, which is just amazing, then you know how awesome it was. And so that's your first time of literally just getting out of the house on your own. You're getting yourself there. You're providing your own transportation. You're going where you want to go. You can pick your friends up, get in, play your jams loud, and go and have an awesome time. So you can drive to Baskin Robbins if you want, get some little creamage, whatever it is, and it's awesome. So that's one of the coolest times as a kid where you really get to experience that freedom. Another huge time is when you graduate from high school. So uh, some people are uh, able to go on to college and may choose to go get a degree. And if you go away to a college, that's your first time out of your parents' house for good and or for at least an extended period. And there is nothing like it. And some kids do it in a responsible way. Uh, some do it in an irresponsible way. I was the irresponsible one, but that's okay. Um, actually, it's not, but whatever. Um, so, uh, you know, once we have that freedom, we're out there and we're like, yes, finally, this is what I've been searching for and striving for forever. Oh, all I want to do is get out of my parents' house. That's, that's, as kids, what goes through our mind and comes out of our mouth several times. And that's because we don't want rules of our parents and we get tired of hearing it and we want to do things our way. And so when we get out and we finally have that freedom that we've sought for so long, uh, what do we do with it? Do we make good choices or do we make bad choices? And the thing is, is that unfortunately we uh, make bad choices a majority of the time. Um, so the very freedom that we're given 
ends up leading to our downfall. And so we become slaves to sin. Uh, God gave us laws to live by. Uh, we have broken those laws because in our freedom, we have chosen to disobey God and say, no, we don't think your way is best. Just like we've said no to our parents as a toddler, I think my way is best. I want to do what I want to do. So we are saying no to God and saying, yes, I know what's better. I know what's going to make me happy. And so we choose sin. And so whatever sin we choose, we become a slave to. And whatever has mastery over us, we become slaves to. So that may be alcohol, it may be drugs, it may be overeating, uh, it may be pornography. There's a, there's a whole list of things. But whatever sin has mastery over you, you are a, sl a slave to. And we are actually born into the world slaves of sin. And that started at the, at the earliest of times with Adam and Eve when sin was born into the world. So we are born into this world sinners and slaves to sin. Um, one thing that we can do though, and this is something that's awesome that's available to us, is that we can switch from being slaves to sin to being slaves of righteousness. And it seems like, okay, well how is that really freedom if I'm going from being a slave it's, I'm not really a slave if I'm able to do whatever I want. That means I'm free, right? Well, no, that, that very freedom that you have actually leads to your death. It leads to your eternal death because you are eternally separated from God, still dead in your sin. And it also leads to your downfall just as a human being because you're not, you're not fulfilling what you were created to do. And so you are doing things based on your own rationale and going with your own gut feeling and actually just living in the ways of the world instead of living how God has created you to live. Um, but the good, the good news is, is that God does not leave us in that state of being a slave to sin. We have an availability to go from that to a slave of righteousness. And so you may be thinking, how is being a slave to righteousness me being free? I'm, I'm a slave, which means I have something or someone that I am that that is in charge of me that that I have to be submissive to um, but that very that very submission that we do would be uh, us giving that to Jesus Christ and giving ourselves to Jesus and that's where we find true freedom and so that's what we're going to read today in Romans chapter 6 so we're going to start off in Romans chapter 6 and verse 5 and we're going to read through verses uh, verse 14 if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In this same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin, but, excuse me, do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. So the way that we are brought from being slaves of sin to slaves of righteousness is through Jesus Christ. So in our old self, and, and when we were still slaves to sin, um, our bodies were, were dead. We were dead because we were not in connection with God. We were we were separated from God, so our bodies were were bound for hell. It was bound for eternity away from God. And what Christ offers is life, is true life. And so he actually died for our sins, taking the punishment that we deserve. So we died with Christ and our body died with Christ. And then he rose from the dead so that we also can rise from the dead and and, and be cleansed of our sins and become clean through our faith in Jesus Christ. So we're sealed with his Holy Spirit. And so when we face God, he sees Jesus Christ in us instead of us in our sinful nature. So we are made righteous through our faith in God. And so what it's saying here is that um, 
that we are no longer slaves to sin. Uh, at this time, we can put that aside, and we can do that through the power of Jesus Christ. And, we're, and that is also through the grace that, that Jesus gives. Um, so we're no longer under the law of the Old Testament. We know that we couldn't live up to the laws that God set for us. They were set to, uh, they were set to, um, to show us that we actually couldn't do that and show our need for God. So even in our freedom and our independence that we have all fought for for so long and wanted as kids and, and growing up to the and even as adults, we don't want to be told what to do. We want to be able to do things our way. We know that doing things our way leads to death, and we know that that, that is us reaching a point where we have to decide between right and wrong, and God has established right and wrong for us. So we either say yes to God and what he has uh, told us to do, or we say, no, I want to do things my way. My way is better. And when we do that, that is sin, and that is us rejecting God. And so that's what leads to death. But the awesome news is, is that through faith in Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the law, but we're under grace. And grace is, is a free gift. That's something that's given to us that we don't deserve. So that is us getting eternal life through Jesus Christ who died for our sins, which is incredible. And so what it's saying is not to let us offer our bodies as instruments of wickedness. So not to let our bodies obey all of its evil desires that we had before. So how do we do that? How do we go from becoming slaves of sin to slaves of righteousness? Well, we know it's through Jesus Christ. He's the one that makes us clean. But how do we continue to, to turn from the sin? Because this is, this is talking about here to not let it reign in our, in our bodies. And this is talking about after we come to Christ, but to offer ourselves to God because we are those who have been brought from death to life. So we're to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Um, so how, how do we do that? How do we say no to things that we know are wrong? But one thing, we have the Holy Spirit that's in us, and the Holy Spirit is regenerating us and helping us to become more like Christ. Um, another thing that we do is we have to stay in God's Word. If we stay in the Word of God, then we understand God, and we understand who we are apart from God, and we understand who we are in God, in Christ. And so this is all here for our benefit. So the Bible is here for our benefit to understand God, and it's even more importantly here to glorify God and for us to see God for how and who he really is and how awesome he truly is. So um, we know here that we're no longer under the law, but under grace. All right. So uh, we're going to continue reading here. Um, we know that we want to turn from sin and turn to Christ. So we don't want to let that reign in our bodies any longer, but we want to offer ourselves as a, as a living sacrifice to Christ. If we go on and read in uh, verses 15 through 23, this is again in Romans chapter 6. It says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone, when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have now been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves, just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness." What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this uh, shows a couple of huge things. Um, again, us in our, uh, our state of having the freedom that we fought so hard for, and when I say freedom and independence, I mean for us to be able to do what we want to do as an individual. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and I don't want anybody to tell me otherwise. That is us living in our sinful state because 
God has set right and wrong, and that allows us to say, you know what? No, I don't want to do what God wants me to do. I want to do what I want to do. Um, so we are no longer to be uh, slaves to sin, which leads to death, but we are told to be obedient to Jesus. So we are told to be obedient to him, and that leads to righteousness. Um, and thanks to God, it says that even though we used to be slaves to sin, we have wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which we are entrusted, and we're now set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So our righteousness comes through obedience. Our obedience comes from turning from our sins and turning to God. And when we turn to God and, and we come to faith in Jesus Christ, the more that we get to know Him in His Word and through prayer, and the more His Holy Spirit works in our lives, the more we say no to world, worldly ways and we start to say yes to Jesus. And so we were weak in our natural selves and we used to offer the parts of our body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness. But what it's saying is to use that same uh, level of enthusiasm that we put into sin, which sounds ridiculous, but that's what we did is we put all of our energy into doing what we want and to change that and to make us slaves to righteousness, and that leads to holiness. Um, so it even talks about the things that we did when we were slaves to sin, the, the things that we thought would make us happy, which everybody knows, anyone that's ever, if you've struggled with alcoholism or been through any kind of addiction to drugs or, or whatever it may be, um, you know that those things that you thought would bring you happiness in the end didn't bring you happiness. They didn't bring you joy and peace. Those were just small, small little slices of happiness, of worldly happiness that faded away. And so that leaves a hole there that we try to fill with different things. And that, that hole can only be filled with Jesus Christ. And that's the only way to have a lasting fulfillment and lasting peace and lasting joy and to become the righteousness that God desires. And so how we do that is through our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we can leave those things aside, the things that we did before that we're ashamed of now. We can, we can set that aside because we've been set free from sin and, and we have now become slaves to God. And so the benefit that we reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. So for the wages of sin is death. That's us and our old selves with all of our uh, freedom that, that we wanted and our, and our independence that we wanted so much. That leads to death. That's eternal life away from God. Um, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he has given our dead bodies life. Just as Jesus died and rose from the dead, so will our bodies die and raise from the dead through our faith in him. And so what we want to do is turn from our old ways and allow God to change us. And so um, that's what leads us from becoming slave, uh, changes us from being slaves of sin to becoming slaves of righteousness. And so to end, how is being a slave of righteousness being free? It's because we're doing what we were created to do, and that is to serve God and love God and allow him to change us to become more like him. Um, so if we want righteousness, we want peace, we want joy, then we need to become slaves to God. And that's a good thing, and that's done out of love. That's us being obedient to the one who can make us better people. And we can only do that through the help of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ. So if you want to be happier, if you want to have joy, if you want to have peace, if you want to have eternal life, then that's when you turn from your own independence and you turn to complete dependence on Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you all so much for your time. Happy 4th of July, Independence Day, and uh, try to cut down on the hot dogs a little bit, maybe the beans, for everybody's sake around you. Uh, but anyway, I hope you have an awesome one, and uh, happy 4th. See ya.